you're a member of community of this community across Queensland that is under siege from youth crime. Just before I cross to Terry Goldsworthy, I'll quote from this article, page seven, Courier Mail. Criminologist Terry Goldsworthy says, Queensland's youth crime crisis is at boiling point as a direct result of breach of bail being removed as an offence and detention orders being imposed only as a last resort. Dr Goldsworthy said the removal of breach of bail laws seven years ago had been a major contributor to youth crime spiralling. This is what he said, quote, In 2016, the Labor government removed the offence of breach of bail for youth offenders. He went on to say it's also outlined for youth offenders a detention order should be imposed only as a last resort and for the shortest appropriate period. He went on to say this, quote, In 2019, the government further weakened youth justice laws by passing legislation that was designed to facilitate more grants of bail to youth offenders. I need say no more. This has been our nightmare for some years now. I'm going to cross uh, directly to the Associate Professor in Criminology at Bond University, Dr Terry Goldsworthy. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, John. Terry, these, uh, these modifications to the laws as we understand them, have, well, the, what's been happening in the last 48 hours or so? Can you t- tell us in brief about these developments and what they mean? Yes, what we've seen is the Premier has now come out yesterday and said that they're going to reintroduce the breach of bail offence for youth offenders. Uh, that is something that has been sought for at least two to three years by uh, myself and other people and uh, also the opposition. So we've had, a, uh, I guess, a win on that and that will now uh, be in place for the police to have an effective and efficient way to deal with youth offenders who are on bail and choose to continue to offend. Effective and efficient way to deal with them. Can you expand on that for us? Well, at the moment, if a youth offends on bail, they arrest them for whatever offence they've committed. But in terms of the bail, uh, they have to wait till the youth appears back in court to seek it being revoked or there's a quite convoluted process they can go through to try and get that bail uh, you know, revoked immediately. This just allows it to be a much simpler and streamlined process. It also captures the offending on bail as an offence in itself. And it should be. I mean, bail is a privilege, not a right. If you want to go out and commit an offence on bail, then there should be a penalty for you doing that action as well as the original offence. So this will allow uh, on our youth offenders' criminal history now for a magistrate or judge to clearly see uh, how many breaches of bail that they've done and it'll be contained in that uh, you know that system which will be very easy for the courts to read, read and access. Let's go back to that um, business just a few short days ago, a couple of weeks ago, where uh, Minister Miles actually was very critical of a particular magistrate for letting a whole lot of uh, um, uh, people out of uh, Cleveland, plus a whole lot of other, I think there were about 13 or 14 of them, it was referred to as a stunt. Now, if indeed they're going to be denied bail, where would they be held? Well, John, that's the uh, question. I mean, uh, we've seen, uh, you know, when you're in government, you've got to have full planning. You've got to look ahead and see what you need in place to support your policies. Uh, at the moment, we're seeing criticism of the police holding youth offenders in watch houses. That isn't their problem. I mean, the police will move a youth offender on as soon as there's room in a youth detention centre. If they're holding prisoners of a young age, it's because there's nowhere to send them. So this is something the government's going to have to figure out. Where will they put these uh, youth offenders uh, if we're going to keep more of them inside? Because uh, to, short, to stop the short-term offending cycle where someone is on drugs, out there offending, you know, running rampant, you need to put them in custody to stop the offending. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I don't care what the uh, other elements of the progressive side of the argument say. You need to stop someone from that short-term offending cycle by putting them in custody to allow the offending to stop. And that way you protect the community. The long-term therapeutic rehab stuff can come in the long-term offending cycle. There's a difference between them. can't tell you just how refreshing it is to hear the term protect the community. It's been virtually irrelevant for decades. Oh, it has. It seems to, and you know, in my article here in the paper today, I, I went through the history of how we got here, and you can see the erosion of the principle of protecting the community being put 
Uh, second, way behind the principle of keeping youth offenders out of jail. And, yeah. you know, just to give people an example, we don't send many children to jail or many youth. About 6% of court matters end up with a custodial sentence. And that's court matters. Next to the court matters, we have 15,000 cautions and we have 2,500 conferences, which happen outside of the court process. So, uh, you know, we're not seeing a lot of kids to jail. In terms of stolen vehicles, over a 15-year period, the average sentence given to a youth who was sentenced to jail for uh, stealing a vehicle was 3.6 months. So they are doing very few go to jail, and those do do very short periods of time in there. Can I just go briefly to the 10 points? In fact, I won't really uh, spend any time on those at all. I mean, uh, discussion up here would suggest those 10 points introduced or that were mooted by the uh, Palaszczuk government amounted to virtually no deterrent at all. However, now that breach of bail has been added to the mix, people are thinking maybe we're cutting through. I've got to say this uh, coverage across Queensland by all of these editors today is a very important and strong stand. Maybe today, Terry Goldsworthy, we are turning a corner. Oh, I think we have. And, you know, what we've seen today, I, you know, I've never seen it in my time when I was in the police or now at university. I've never seen such a coordinated approach uh, of, I guess, an outpouring of dissatisfaction in terms of government policy and how they're responding to issues. So, uh, you know, we live in a democracy and, uh, you know, the government needs to listen to the people. I bet you're in demand today, are you? I've had a few calls, John, and just trying to uh, work through them. <laughs> oh, good on you. Thank you. Thank God you're there for us to turn to. I mean, you know, the voice of common sense at last is uh, starting to glow, and I think a whole lot of us are a little bit wary, but we're looking at here a little glimmer of hope around the corner. Let's hope we're correct today. Terry, thank you. Thank you. That's Dr. Terry Goldsworthy, Associate Professor of Criminology at Bond University.